Hello and welcome to our next video about standard elements. I said the base elements are already handled, huh? or the basic base elements, let's call them. Yeah? This time we're going to talk about the first combined element. Huh? We're going to combine those two things, huh? a differential element and the delay element first order, D and PT1. What the result is, is a so-called DT1 element. Okay. This is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a DT1 element. This DT1 element is basically a really existing D element. Okay. I said that the D element is somewhat artificial and now we come to the d element which is existing in reality okay how does do uh, how does these two things look like we do have we do have a block uh, which is a d element we do have a block which is a PT1 element. So here we have the PT1. And here we have the D element. And those two are in series. Here is the input. Xi from S and here is the output X over S. Okay. Let's remember let's remember the transfer functions okay. for the D element. This was the transfer function of the D element. So this this Gs, Gd from S equals Kd multiplied by S. Okay, this was the transfer function of the Pt1 element. So Gt1 from S equals Kt. I now write t, index t, that we know which k is coming from where, 1 plus st. Okay. What is the total transfer function? The total transfer function of two in series are the multiple multiplication. So g from s equals gt from s multiplied by gt1 from s. So the result is kd multiplied by s multiplied by kd1 plus st. Okay, I'll write it a little bit different. So this is kd multiplied by kd multiplied by s divided 1 plus st. Okay. Now let's have a look at this. A constant multiplied by a constant. Two constants multiplied is a new constant. So basically here is k multiplied by s 1 plus st. Okay. This is the transfer function of the dt1 element. Now, what is the frequency response? Just substitute all S's with J omega. So at top we have J omega K, yeah? and at the bottom we have 1 plus J omega T. Now, we're going to determine. 
see what this means here is the imaginary axis is the real axis j omega k basically is here j up because it's j it's positive imaginary and here the length is omega k the more omega is the bigger this will be yeah if omega is zero this will be zero yeah. and here we have 1 plus j omega d so this i will now use this there is one and here is omega t yeah? and this is the part okay. real part one imaginary part omega t yeah? and we have a division let's think what this means for omega equals zero the absolute value from this is the absolute value from g from j om j zero this is zero divided by 1 this is 0 okay. what's about the argument here we have got 90 degree and here if this is 0 we have 0 degree 90 minus 0 is 90 okay add at omega infinity yeah. what does this mean actually we would get here this is infinity this is also infinity but infinity divided by infinity what does this mean i can do a little trick because i can write i divide above and down divided by j omega so i write j omega k divided by j omega and down here 1 plus j omega d divided by j omega okay so this j omega is gone k yeah then i have 1 divided by j omega okay plus t if omega is getting really really big yeah this will get zero okay this will get zero and the rest is k divided by t okay i hope that's clear and what is the argument this remains 90 degree if this is growing 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 this will also get 90 degree 90 degree minus 90 degree is zero degree okay. so these are the things of a dt1 element okay. from this transfer function and so on we are going now to determine the step and the frequency response so right here one once again dt1 element yeah? g from s is ks divided by 1 plus st 
Okay. And G from J omega is J omega K divided by one plus J omega T. Okay. The absolute value from J omega is K divided by square root from one plus omega t squared. Okay. I hope this is clear. Okay. And the argument from j omega is 90 degree minus arcus tangents from omega t. This is this here. This is 90 minus this one. Okay. Here we said, okay, this is 90. This is the angle of this one. And above minus below is the total angle. What we say? Here, nothing, of course. And then we said at the step we have hi very high, very high frequencies. Okay. At very high frequencies, we end up at k divided by t. So we are going to jump here okay, to somewhere, and this somewhere here is k divided by t. And then then we do have uh, the pt1, the rest pt1. Here we see this t. Uh, after five t's, it's finished. Uh, here we are around two third. We are going down here. Uh, this is the step response of a dt1 element. Here we reach zero again. Yeah, this is what I said. Here the frequency is getting lower, 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 lower. And if the frequency is zero, we will reach zero again. So we will slowly go back to zero. And here we do see the time constant, this t. So if we have this type of step response, yeah, we can measure out this t and we can measure out this and calculate k and t and know the transfer function. Okay. Do the uh, frequency response. Frequency response, we can divide those things. Here, yeah, this is actually looking like this. k s multiplied by 1 divided 1 plus st. This is a pt1 element with k1. This is a pt1 element with k1, and this here is actually a d element with k. Okay? How would this pt1 element look like here? How would this pt1 element look like here? Here we can see in our example, this t should be 10. Yeah? So at the 10th, I will have the band. So it would look somewhat like that. Ah, sorry. And here we will start to drop. That's basically the pt1 element. Here we will have zero. Here at the band we will have minus 45. And here we have then somewhere 90. Minus 90, of course. This will be the pt1 element, this part here. k1, one line, passed. Okay? How? Remember? Remember this. Here we have k. Here we have omega g. Omega g is 1 by divided by t, 
omega g, 1 divided by d, k is 1 in this case. Now let's have a look at the d element. Yeah. Here the omega d would be 1 divided by kd. Okay, 1 divided by kd. And we have a straight rising. And we will always be at 90 degree. So here we are at plus 90 degree. And in my example, if this is 10, yeah, this k divided by 10 must be 3, because I've made it a 3, so this k is 30. Yeah. And 1 divided by 30 is 0 0.03. So 0 0.0, 1, 2, 3 here, around here somewhere. Yeah. We are passing through. Yeah. So this would be the line of the D element. Okay. And now we have the multiplication of both. This is this D element, this is this BT1 element, and we have the multiplication. And I can tell you the multiplication in a Bode plot in a logarithmic scale, a multiplication looks like a shifting. Yeah? Here we are at the one line, so we are not changing this, we are not changing this at all. Okay, because this multiplied by one will look like this. Okay, and suddenly starting at this point, at this very point, maybe a little bit too thick, at this very point, suddenly this line starts to drop and this line starts to raise. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Yeah. Let's say here we do have an amplification, here we do have an amplification of x, yeah. Whatever, however high this is right now. Yeah. And here we do have an ampli amplification of, I'll write now, y. Yeah? The total amplification is x multiplied by y. Yeah? And here, at 10 times the frequency, I have here 10x. Yeah? And in the other case, at 10 times the frequency, I have a tenth of y. Yeah? And x multiplied by y yeah, is the amplification at this point. Yeah? And now the amplification at this point is 10, I should write it black because it was black, 10x multiplied by y divided by 10, this 10 is away, and it's still the same, it's still the same Amplification. So we are going to end up here. Yeah? We, there will be a horizontal line. There will be a horizontal line. Yeah? This is always the case. If something is rising and something is falling, this will this will compensate this rising. Yeah? And this is exactly how the total will look like. So we are go growing here. Yeah? Here we will, there is again the factor square root of 2 and here we will be constant. This is read out of the combination of those two elements. You don't have to learn this. This here, this frequency, it's the same frequency and this omega g is again 1 divided by t. This is exactly at this position where the pt1 element inside has the bend. Okay. 
here, this frequency is at 1 divided by k, yeah? the pinching frequency, where we pinch the one line. And where do we end up here? Where do we end up here? If this frequency is 1 divided by k, and this frequency is 1 divided by d, and this frequency is that amount higher, so if we say omega g divided by omega d, how much higher is this? So this is 1 divided by d divide 1 divided by k. Yeah? So this is k divided by d. If we have here 1, we have here k divided by d. Again, it's a different approach, but again, we come to the same result. Yeah? Okay. Of course, you can still think about it like this. Yeah? k divided by d with this thing and this approach. Yeah? And here, out of the Bode plot, with a totally different approach, just by laying, overlay those two elements, we come to the same approach. Yeah? Because this here is exactly k divided by d higher than this here. So and if we have here amplification factor 1, we must be k divided by d higher here. That's it. Now let's have a look on the border on the on the argument. Do imaginary numbers multiplied will those two will add? Yeah? And here we do have the PT1 part. It looks like this. This is the d part, so the dt1 part is simply this pl plus this, and this is minus, so it will get down. Yeah? So we are starting here. Here will be here will be at 45 degree, exactly at the, the at the band frequency, the characteristic frequency. We will be at 45 degree because it's 90 minus 45. Yeah? And it will look like this. And somewhere we will get close to zero degree. Frequency response, step response of a DT1 element, these are the transfer functions. just used the combination of those two elements. Next time we are going to talk about another combined element. Next time we are talking about a PT element. Proportional and a D element will be combined. And this time we are not multiplicating, we are not serialize them, we will parallelize them and see how this then looks. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.